Welcome, I'm Seth Bosted. I am the lecturer for the Grant Park Music Festival's 2021 season. The concert that I'll be talking about tonight will take place on Wednesday, July 21st, and it features three fantastic works. The concert opens up with a short gem by Lily Boulanger, her setting of Psalm 24, and then it goes to a song cycle by Jonathan Dove called The Passing of the Year, and it concludes with the great E minor mass by Anton Bruckner. Each of these three pieces has somewhat unusual instrumentation in that there are no strings. We'll hear the chorus, but in the orchestra, there are no strings. And that was a deliberate decision. Grant Park Music Festival Chorus Director Christopher Bell tells us more. One of the restrictions that we have on the stage is to try and fit a symphony orchestra and a chorus into that space. And when we were planning the summer, we had to take account of spacing, the possibility and the need for masks, which is still in place as I speak to you, um, and the size of the stage. Now the stage is pretty enormous. It fits a full-size symphony orchestra and a chorus of 120. But the minute you put six feet between singers, between players, back and front and everything else, these numbers come crashing down. So, you know, is this a restriction or is this an opportunity? Um, we've decided to make it an opportunity. And so in this Bruckner program, we're doing an amazing piece of music that only requires uh, the wind players, wind and brass players of the orchestra, Bruckner's E minor mass. It's a superb piece. Um, Carlos loves Bruckner, uh, does Bruckner very well. So this is going to be a real treat. Alongside that, English composer Jonathan Dove has written a fabulous set of pieces of music called The Passing of the Year. And uh, that's for double chorus and piano. Um, and so we'll clear the stage. Uh, no, um, uh, no orchestral instrumentalists, uh, just two pianists, um, and we'll be performing that. Um, but I think, I think the real charming jewel of this program is the very, very first piece, which is uh, Lily Boulanger's Psalm 24. This is an amazing piece of music. It's quite astounding. Um, it's very, it's not very long. I think off the top of my head, it's five, six minutes maximum. Um, I'm sorry, we're not performing it three times. Um, a Psalm 24, then the Dove, Psalm 24, then the Bruckner, and then Psalm 24 again. Because honestly, I do believe you'll want to hear it a second time. It's like, oh, wow. So I very much look forward to seeing what your reactions are going to be to Lily Boulanger's Psalm 24. That's Grant Park Music Festival Chorus Director Christopher Bell talking about uh, this decision to, uh, you know, to, to adhere to social distancing guidelines, but uh, to turn it into an advantage. And uh, I think it's a great decision and it resulted in uh, being able to program some really wonderful music. The concert opens up with Lily Boulanger's setting of Psalm 24. Uh, so let me talk about that psalm first. If you don't know this particular psalm, it's one of the more uh, bold psalms in many respects. It opens up with a no-nonsense proclamation of the Lord's power. The Lord has power. And then the second section is a kind of set of instructions for the penitent on how you would approach the Lord or how you would approach ground that is sacred to the Lord. And then the third part is another bold proclamation. A Messiah will rise. A Lord of hosts will come forth and carry the Lord's words forward. Lily Boulanger uh, was a tragic figure in many respects in music. She only lived to be 24. Uh, she died of a chronic illness that kept her in bed a lot of her life. She was a very, very religious person. I think it's easy to see why this psalm would have appealed to her in its boldness, in its statement of faith. Although she only lived to be 24, uh, she packed those years with an awful lot of music, uh, considering. And she was very, very successful in her lifetime as well. In fact, she won the Rome Prize, which is one of the coveted prizes in music composition. People before her who had won it include big names like Ravel and Debussy. So this is a major work uh, to win it so young and, and quite frankly, as, as a woman, uh, where the jury would have been somewhat hostile towards her work, well, it's remarkable in, uh, in every respect. Psalm 24, her setting of it, is also remarkable in every respect. Bold words require bold music. And that's exactly what we get from Boulanger. Uh, the opening is especially powerful. She comes in brass, roaring, everything is uh, this, this uh, meant to get your attention. Let's put it that way, and, and it surely does. I wanna play that opening, and then uh, things kind of quiet down a little bit, and there's this tenor solo that is just magnificently gorgeous. I'm gonna play as much of it as I can. This piece is only about three and a half minutes long. It is an absolute gem. Let's hear about half of it. 
That's music by Lily Boulanger, her setting of Psalm 24. As I said uh, before we listened to it, bold words require bold music, and we certainly get that from Boulanger. A three and a half minute work, uh, but what a way to open up the program. We heard about half of the piece. You're going to love it. Uh, it. It is wonderful, stunning music by Lily Boulanger, and I'm really happy to see that it's programmed this piece by the Grant Park Music Festival, and really happy to start seeing her name popping up on programs around the country. She's a fantastic composer, and uh, we, we can't help but wonder what kind of wonderful music we would have had had she lived longer. The second work on the program is by a composer named Jonathan Dove, who is a British composer, and it's called The Passing of the Year. It is a seven song song cycle that he wrote to commemorate the memory of his mother. Each of the seven songs is by a different poet. I want to play the first one, which is Invocation. Uh, if you know anything about American music in the 60s and 70s, you might know the minimalist movement, Steve Reich, Philip Glass, etc. So uh, Jonathan Dove is very inspired by minimalism, these repeated patterns in music that change gradually over time, or in the case of uh, Steve Reich, kind of phase, go in and out of phase. And Jonathan Dove, much like the minimalists, is also inspired by Indian music, especially North India. And so we get this kind of combination of, of a North Indian raga cycle with minimalistic repeated patterns that creates enormously appealing lyrical music uh, that, is, that is highly rhythmic as well. Let's hear the opening. This is the invocation. The poetry is by William Blake. The music is by Jonathan Dove. Thank you. 
Music by British composer Jonathan Dove from his great song cycle, The Passing of the Year. Again, there are seven movements. I thought that rather than kind of drop the needle on each of the movements, it's almost impossible to give you a sense of the whole work. We would just listen to the opening or part of the opening movement, the invocation. Poetry by William Blake. I hope you can hear, especially in the, in the piano part, this uh, idea of these repeated patterns. Uh, it's never monotonous, though. He has a wonderful way of spinning it out and uh, keeping our interest with these rhythmic patterns. Again, a kind of synthesis of North Indian raga music with American minimalism. Fascinating music by Jonathan Dove. That is the second piece on the program. The concert will conclude with Anton Bruckner's E Minor Mass, one of his earliest works, although he was in his 40s by the time he wrote it. In fact, Bruckner is a pretty interesting character all the way around. He was a wildly gifted uh, musician, as you might expect. Uh, he was especially known as an organist, virtuoso organist. He was great at improvising. He could even improvise fugues. But on the composition front, he took his time. He really studied, studied and studied everything, counterpoint, orchestration, you name it. And only when he was in his 40s did he say, okay, I've learned everything I need to learn. Now I can start to compose. And his earliest works are the First Symphony and this E minor Mass, which was commissioned for a new church in his hometown of Linz, Austria. The piece is a setting of the Latin Mass, the Ordinary, and the Latin Mass has six parts. They are the Kyrie, the Gloria, the Credo, the Benedictus, and then the Sanctus, and the Agnus Dei. And Bruckner is faithful to this 100%. He uses that text. So let's play a little bit of the Kyrie. Uh, Kyrie traditionally is in three parts. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. The piece opens up beautifully. It's like we're leaving the material world from the very, very beginning. We sense Bruckner's spirituality, his sincere religious feeling from the very opening notes of this work. It starts very softly with women's voices and builds from there. In fact, this movement, as I was talking about the extremes of dynamics, this movement is almost a microcosm for the piece as a whole in that respect. Let's hear this gorgeous opening and then we jump up towards the end of the movement. This is the Kyrie, the opening movement of the E minor mass by Anton Bruckner. Part of the opening of the Kyrie and then the ending or part of the ending from Anton Bruckner. That's the opening movement of his E minor mass. And we know we're leaving the mundane world as soon as we hear that music. Bruckner doesn't waste any time setting the scene. This is a mass for God. We are not uh, meant to think about mortal things. The second movement of the Mass is the Gloria, and this is the celebratory section of the Mass. This is where you say, Glory to God in the highest. I just want to play the opening about a minute of this because what Bruckner does with it is wonderful.
That's a little bit of the opening of the Gloria movement by Anton Bruckner, the second movement of the E minor Mass. And this is the part of the Mass that is just celebratory, glory to God in the highest. I love what Bruckner does with this music. If you played it for me and I didn't know the piece, I would never guess that it was Anton Bruckner. I'm used to his symphonies developing so slowly, glacially. Uh, we always say, you know, with Bruckner, why say what you can say in five minutes when you can say it in 40, you know, because he's normally just, he works on a whole other scale in many respects. And yet here in the mass, the music is a lot more condensed. Uh, his ideas are flowing a lot more rapidly and it's perfect music, I think, for the glorious setting. The third movement of the mass is the credo. And this in many respects is the heart of the mass. This is the proclamation of faith. Uh, it comes from the Nicene Creed, which was hashed out somewhere in the fourth century. So this is the most important part of the Mass. This is where a Catholic says, I believe in God. I believe that Jesus is my Savior. Let's listen to what Bruckner does. I'm going to go in about a minute and a half. This is gorgeous, gorgeous music. Music by Bruckner from the Credo. Isn't that gorgeous? It is absolutely gorgeous. I hate to fade that down. It is such beautiful, beautiful music. Again, religious, heartfelt. Uh, this is Bruckner after many, many years of study, starting to strut his stuff as a composer. He gets his commission to write music for a big, beautiful, Romanesque new church in his hometown of Linz, Austria. And he takes it very, very seriously. In fact, as I said, he revised this piece four times. This is deeply, deeply personal music. It's almost like we're eavesdropping on somebody's conversation with God in parts of this Mass. Beautiful music from the Credo. That is the third movement of the Mass. The Mass concludes with the Agnus Dei, as it should, because that's the last movement of the Mass. Uh, the Agnus Dei is the Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Traditionally, it's in three parts. The first part is this Lamb who takes away the sins. The second part is a plea, have mercy on us. And the third part is another plea, grant us peace. And for me, at least, what Bruckner does with that third part of the Agnus Dei, of the traditional Agnus Dei, is absolutely gorgeous. In the way that the Mass just kind of trails off. This plea for peace, we're back in the mortal realm in many respects. This is a fervently religious person who is really, you know, after years of study, just starting to express himself as a composer, has this important commission for a new church. And this is the how he ends the Mass. This is his plea for peace at the end of the Mass. Let's listen to the final minute and a half or so of the Mass in E minor by Anton Bruckner. <laughs>
That's the ending of the Mass in E minor by Anton Bruckner. This work is, in my opinion, one of the most gorgeous choral works out there. Uh, not huge forces, and yet Bruckner manages to impress. As I said, it ranges from almost no dynamics at all, practically a whisper, to full-on crashing sheets of sound. And he does it all with brass, a few woodwinds, organ, and mixed choir. Uh, no strings whatsoever, again. It is a monumental work from a composer who will go on to create almost nothing but monumental works. And it closes out this fantastic program. I'm Seth Bosted. Thanks so much for listening, and hope to see you at a future talk.